Hey guys, Rich Belge here with MinistryAV.com and I just wanted to give you a real brief overview of Light Converse. There you have our theater space loaded and uh, go full screen here for just a second. So this is um, our theater and this is the layout from our show that we did recently. I'm gonna simplify things here. So I've created a fairly elaborate place, but as you can see, I didn't worry about everything. Just some key elements um, for our theater. So I have our vignettes here. This kind of represents the edge of our stage. This is our proscenium. And then I have our catwalks here as reference points, so when I want to put a light in the room, uh, I know where it physically needs to be and that gives me an idea for checking throw distances and stuff like that. Uh, you know, if I need to use a 19 degree source 4, uh, if I need to use a 36 degree, stuff like that. So having locations in place where you would hang lights will let you help accurately pick out fixtures ahead of time instead of trial and error, which saves some time. And then up here I have our uh, electrics. So we have a vortex system in the theater which is all motorized battens. And so that's where we have a bulk of our moving lights as you can see. Um, basically I use this program to uh, try out ideas and plan things. Uh, we had a lot of people on this stage. This is representing a scrim that we use. This is the main band layout. We actually had two. Um, we had one upstage setup with singers, and uh, these things never come with great people models for some reason. One day I'll find some good aftermarket ones to plug in. But so we put in a drum riser scale. This represents choir riser, bass player, keyboard players, guitar players, singers, and we had another set that used our downstage edge so we put them into scale and then let me try ideas like these side lights I accidentally stumbled across doing this uh, while playing around with the software where I casted their shadow on the psych so when we wanted something with a little more movement you know as you can see you got the drummer there but you also have a shadow up there and a bass player shadow and that, that's we put everything in the exact same spot with the exact same instruments in real life and, and it looked just like that uh, which was pretty cool. Um, what else did we do that was cool with this show? Uh, we moved all of our Comar strip lights down to the edge, uh, which those aren't always there. We have some Comar LD pars for side lights. Uh, don't worry about that little pop up. Um, we have lots of Martin 4 ones, 2K washes, 2K profiles, and Martin 550s. We use a lot of conventionals, uh, as you can see with the side lights, but also on the ground. Uh, when you click on a fixture, it kind of zooms out. And since I'm not in the mode where the console is controlling it, let me turn this down, turn up some haze. Um, when you're using it in the standalone mode, you control the fixtures manually, which is cool for trying out ideas. You don't necessarily need a console. Um, so we use this a lot with just uh, some 19 degrees source 4's on the ground kind of blasting up and it really did look just like that. I think we splayed them out a little more in the picture if you look on the pictures on the site but more or less laid them out just like that same number of fixtures and that way when we were programming we could see everything live in the software um, you know in program queues without having to have the fixtures actually set up. We programmed a lot of the show before any of this was set up. And then, uh, just to give you an idea, you know, if we wanted to go full white, it was pretty intense. You know, we didn't smoke the room that much, so we didn't really get that effect. But probably, you know, something more like that is pretty realistic. And if we uh, go to a color instead, you know, but it does look cooler with the haze. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm double clicking on fixtures to select all the same type. You can select one at a time, but for this purpose, just one at selecting a group is cool. That's our four ones. Uh, we have several of them, and uh, you know you pretty much get the same f controls you get. You got pan tilt. If you just want to fan things forward, you can you know lock the pan so you only tilt them. You know typical stuff. Um, kind of like a normal fixture, you have to open the shutter to bring up the dimmer. Uh, so just kind of like a regular console. These are our washes, 2K washes. Um, so you've got your color mixing, pan tilt, uh, color wheel, you know, uh, zoom. And again, you know, I mean, you could see here with this throw distance, I mean, it's pretty accurate. I mean, as far as the, the size of the beams and stuff, um, you know, it'll get you 90% in the ballpark. Um, and then oh, the 550s hanging out back there, you know. And for the, in this case, it's a color wheel instead of color mixing, and uh, it does try to simulate scrolling through the wheel, as you can see there. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, very useful. It does take a little time to draw a room, but you know you you do as much detail as you need I mean if you're doing a simple show draw a box you know go you have basically two setup things you need to do DMX is all your lighting related stuff room is all your room related stuff and it's just done with simple shapes um, browse 3d model on an empty layer and you get all these shapes and the room is pretty much built with all these. It's just uh, rectangles, different sizes, you know, just done to scale. Um, some of the included models had D&B line array speakers, which we actually have in the theater, so that was kind of cool. There's people models, you know, keyboard players, guitar players, singers, drummer. And uh, like I said, you can get as crazy as you want. I mean... On the room itself, I put in the line array just for reference, and I put in these curtains. Otherwise, I didn't bother with any textures on the walls or the floor. I might, I may at some point, but in our room, the main thing was the proscenium to know where that is. And I did get pretty precise with all of the lighting locations, all the electrics, the catwalks. You know, that's pretty important. You know, if, if you don't have your fixture accurately placed, if you don't have your room to scale, you really can't aim anything because uh, you just won't be very close but this gets me about ninety percent there it's not perfect but it's close enough and then here's the DMX screen just for fun um, so again each fixture you add shows up there and there's a limit at some point it looks like but uh, that's a lot of fixtures uh, and you just place them, change them, you address them, uh, it's all through Artnet, so Universe 1 is 0 because Artnet starts counting at 0 and so on. Um, you know I just want to give a basic overview, I don't want to go too crazy, but it is a type of program where you can fumble around and figure most things out. It's not a very, it's not like a 3D CAD program. You can just start going to work and doing stuff uh, and figure most things out on your own. Now if you were to actually control this with a console when you launch it instead of selecting onboard control you would uh, you select visualization only. Now as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network see how nothing it's not receiving any ArtNet, so that's why those fixtures that were on earlier are not on. So now if I were to program the show, you'd see little graphs here on each DMX channel if you're receiving DMX. Uh, when I'm programming a show, I just connect it to a uh, console over ArtNet. 
and now I'll see everything here as if it was the real fixtures in the real room and now you can program and get a lot of work done before you actually get into the room or have everything set up so it's very very useful and uh, that's Light Converse I hope that you guys found this helpful